are now tuned in to this week's episode of our podcast. Today, we are going to interview some of the greatest and most influential minds in our field. By sharing our collective expertise, we will show you how to harness, control, and use your own skill set. Good to have you on the show. This is Amor Bola Steven, your awesome library, it's Amor Bola Steven. The show focuses on expanding professionals who are adept in the topics of personal development and self-improvement. Um, it's been worthwhile having this guest grace the show, sharing disruptive mindset conversations on topics and subjects on the personal development. It gives me great pleasure to have Chris Gibson on the show today. Now, Chris Gibson is a skincare expert, holistic health coach, and hotel and host. Welcome with me on the show today. Chris Happy Gibson. to be here. Glad to have you on the show, Chris. Now I'm looking for an exciting time, which you know, we'll be talking basically and focusing on skincare because that's right. your area of expertise. And I'm looking forward to a great time with you. Now, let me begin with this. Um, what skincare, right, is best for a given age? Uh, well, you know, for any age, uh, definitely the basics should be there, which would be, you know, an appropriate type of cleanser that doesn't dry your skin out whether you have oily skin or normal or dry, you want to make sure that you're using something that's cleansing the skin, leaves it refreshed and hydrated, not squeaky clean and tight. Um, the other thing is to make sure um, that there's a proper moisturizer product in a skincare routine to keep the skin hydrated because a lot of the signs of aging, the visible signs of aging are accentuated by dry skin so they skin looks sexy even at a younger age um and then of course i always tell everyone they need to wear sunscreen of some kind to protect your skin from the accumulating damage from sun rays over the years so a lot <clears throat> a lot of what we see in people 40s 50s 60s and onward the dark spots dark patches fine lines and wrinkles mostly come from accumulated sun damage over the years. So if you can prevent that, especially early on, like I did in your 20s, uh, you end up looking a lot better later. But if you didn't do that and you start doing it now, your skin can actually repair itself a great deal. It can make a big difference uh, in helping you look better, younger if you want. Um, but again, preventing any further damage from accumulated sun light that happens on the skin as we go through all of our years. Oh, right. So I'm um, going forward, so talking about skincare, do you have um, any skincare routine, a perfect skincare routine you'd like to share with my audience, if there is any? Well, I'll use, I'll talk about what I do because that's usually what people ask <laughs> when they find out how old I am and, uh, you know, what what is my routine? My, my basic skincare routine is, as I said, appropriate cleanser. Um, I use a vitamin C serum in the morning uh, because vitamin C is an antioxidant that helps the skin. It helps when you have it in your diet, obviously, but it really helps the skin protect itself from free radical damage and stuff in the air, air tents. It even helps against uh, some of the UVA, UVB light damage. I also use a moisturizer that is oil-free. It's hyaluronic acid based Neutrogena makes the one that I particularly like but there are many of them out there and then of course I use sunscreen and at night I have a cleansing routine of course and then I use a retinol product um, every night followed by a moisturizer so obviously no sunscreen at night so that's really basically it I test a lot of different products there are eye products and fade creams and all sorts of things that I test out that are appropriate in a skincare routine, but if you just wanted to know what I would, what I always do, regardless, that's it. That's what I do. All right. You're doing a good work for yourself, Chris. <laughs> I <laughs> try. Yeah. I try. Yeah, I live in, <laughs> you see, I have a hat on. I live in Florida. And so I really am about protecting my face from sunlight um, because it's very bright here uh, in this particular um environment outdoors but any anybody should be protecting their skin from the sun so whether you whether you use the sunscreen you know or you use clothing or some people use umbrellas the people some wear gloves when they drive you know whatever to protect your skin i'm not an extremist of, of it i don't think you need to live under an umbrella your whole whole life a little sunlight's not going to hurt you uh every day but it's that when we're out in it all day long or you know folks who lay out and well, <laughs> at the sun, 
not such a good idea later on you're going to pay for that with your way your skin looks so so yeah i mean it's that's what i do i've been very consistent with that since i was uh in my 20s and um it's really paid off so i really do preach those those particular components for a skincare routine no right now i like to i like us to talk about um, exercise and diet right mm -hmm. well talking about weight loss right and fitness is it possible for a person to lose weight without um diet or exercise is it automatic um yeah it there can be some changes that happen in uh the body and in your in your stress levels a lot of people with a lot of inflammation tend to hold more weight um, I use the example of when people go on a diet or they start to exercise, a lot of times they get very frustrated because their weight either stays the same for a long time or goes up, even though they're cut calories uh, and they're exercising. And the reason for that is that inflammation in the body is a normal process that happens as part of the healing process. So a lot of people find it, that if they can redu reduce stress levels, just reducing some of the stress. Um, lowers the cortisol production of that hormone and also lowers inflammation, which can lead to some weight loss, um, you know, uh, drinking more water can actually help you lose water weight. So it keeps things flushed out. So really there are some things, diet and exercise obviously are extremely helpful. It's helpful to understand how many calories you're taking in and how many you personally burn your metabolism burns. It's a little different for everybody. I mean, there's, there are definite benchmarks they use for men and women, you know, this many calories is about the average a person burns, but it can vary a lot. Um, the interesting thing is that as people become leaner, they burn things faster. They burn cal more calories and more, your body gets better at that. So as people gain weight, um, it slows it down. So it's sort of like a self-fulfilling cycle either way, <laughs> um, especially if you're frustrated about it. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I think the first place to start is to look at the stress levels um, that you're under and you can do some correction of that. Um, and you may find that helps you eat less too. People tend to eat more when they're stressed out. Um, snack a lot during the day and that sort of thing so uh it plays a role certainly um i think one of the reasons diet plan and exercise plans fail people is that they don't realize that those things are really more of a lifestyle change than a temporary solution so people think of i'm going to diet and get down to a certain weight oftentimes they go back up because they didn't keep that portion control implementation or change in what they're eating implementation or physical activity, implement uh, any of those things. So um, any change you make to the calories you're taking in, uh, if you're consistent, you're gonna have a different outcome. You're, it, it's really about being consistent with things. And if you're not, um, then you're gonna have that up and down sort of thing, which can be really frustrating and kind of hard on you. So. Now, um, intermittent fasting. I know that you 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 know about that. Oh, right? yeah. It's a great tool for a weight loss, right? But um, I want to ask you this question: Do you think it's healthy enough, considering the fact that uh, the body may be um, lacking the important um, nutrients um, by so doing when going through this process? What's your take? Um, What's uh, what do you advise people? Yeah, to? You, again, I think you have to know that you're what you're eating and what nutritional values that it brings. So, because you, you may have to supplement those, you may have to supplement those based on where you live and what your food choices are as well. Um, intermittent fasting, the main benefit of that, um, and the main benefit of calorie control is the autophagy process in the body, which is where the body breaks down diseased cells or old cells, takes out the trash, so to speak, and keeps the good parts and rebuilds new cells. So we're always building new cells. Sometimes we're building healthier cells, sometimes not so healthy. So autophagy, that process, um, 
is a very important process and it can get bogged down as we get older, if we get, you know, too far out of shape. Again, all those things um, impact it. But it is just as important if you're going to do those things to make sure you're getting the right amount of nutrition. And, you know, we talk about that with veganism, uh, you know, all these different diets, keto. Still, there are nutrients you need to make sure that your body is getting um, if you're on those specific type of uh, style diets. It's one reason I like the Mediterranean diet because it incorporates a lot of variety of vegetables and a lot of nutrients in the lean uh, fish and meats with the omega threes, you know, that, that particular choice of food, um, it's tasty and it's easy for people to accomplish where some of these other diets are so strict, it makes it very difficult and you could miss, uh, nutrients that you really, really need. So it's important to not to approach things from the fad prospect, you know, uh, if you're going to change something, you need to really understand how it works and what to look for um, as far as your nutritional needs. You know, it's really, really, really important to do that. So um, again, I do intermittent fasting. I've done that for a while because it works very well for me. Um, it, I also exercise obviously um, and all of those things that we need to do. I, I try to have a fairly robust approach to wellness. Um, so I've been able to kind of stay in shape, but I too look at where my nutritional, you know, I look at that and there are also tests you can do now. Some of them you can do from home, just send the sample in and they'll tell you if you're nutritionally deficient and say like magnesium. A lot of times when people go on these diets like paleo and keto and they're not have a lot of uh, vegetation in their diet, they are short on uh, magnesium and potassium, which can make you feel crummy, <laughs> make you feel tired. It impacts how your hormones, how much hormones you, you're producing. Um, so it's, you know, that was a great question because it's very important to kind of know the whole thing. Um, and always I say, if you're going to do some sort of diet like that, um, or you're going to start a program aggressively, you need to talk to your doctor if you have one about doing that. It's good to start slow on everything. Um, a lot of people jump in head and foot first <laughs> into stuff and, and it's quite a shock to their system. Whereas if you're gonna do, let's just let's just say keto, which is a lack of carbs, I think it's better to step process into keto uh, because you'll find a set point in there where the keto diet or the keto focused diet um, is a more healthy approach. Whereas people get in there and they cut out all the carbs and all this, all that at once, and your body's going, "Whoa, what's going on?" You know, and then you sort of have a detox you have to go through where you can avoid that um, by really understanding how those diets work. Again, a diet—I don't like that word because it implies you're going to do something for a short period of time for long-term gain, and that's not how they work. It's a—it's a choice. So. What I try to get people to see is I'm going to incorporate more leafy greens in my diet. I'm going to incorporate more activity daily or weekly in, in my life ongoing. This is not something I'm going to do for a month and lose a bunch of weight to go to a wedding or an event and then go right back to what I was doing. Um, and then doing it long enough that you get the benefit that you're motivated to keep doing it. You know, skincare is the same way. Um, it takes patience because skin, the skin we see is old news. I mean, that's cells that were produced a long time ago and are reflective of your health, you know, really about six months back. So I tell folks, you got to be very consistent in your skincare practice for you to see the benefits at 90, you know, there's really 90 days. So I tell people, if you're starting a new skincare regimen, sort of like the scale process for skincare, it's taking a selfie. Take a selfie when you start, take one at 30 days, one at 60 days, one at 90 days, and look at the progress or lack thereof so you can make some decisions about what you're doing and what you're using. Is it working for you? It's the same the reason we get on the scale, which is not always indicative, uh, as indicative as the selfie is. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <What> really? <laughs> you know, yeah, the scale can the scale can lie a lot because you know it can it can be so different from day to day. But it is an 
on the long term, if you are overweight by, let's say, 30 pounds, and after a year, you've lost 20 to 25 of those pounds slowly over the year, that's a good indicator that you've headed, you've gone in the right direction. Whereas someone who starves themselves for, uh, you know, two weeks and loses 15 pounds, well, some of that's going to be water that you lost. So now you're probably dehydrated. Um, this is not really a true story about where you are health wise from that. Okay, so um, Chris, how then can we use um, skincare correctly? Well, first you should follow label instructions and you need to know what you're trying to address. So the, the best thing is, and I'll use an example, a lot of people get brown patches or uneven skin tone or skin spots as they get older and they don't like them. Um, so you, what you want to do is use a product designed to help with that and do what I just said, obviously take a selfie and measure the difference in how it looks over time and follow the label directions consistently. Don't use products that are expired. Um, you know, some of these things in skincare, like vitamin C serums have a very short shelf life that people don't realize. Um, you know, any vitamin C serum that you're using, which is going to be helpful for all those things that we just talked about. Um, if it's L-ascorbic acid based shelf life of about six months after you open it, you know, it loses its ability to be helpful. Uh, the reason it's important to follow label instructions, retinols, which are very, very good to use at night to help even skin tone, help speed up skin cell turnover, get away, it takes away textured skin, really makes a person look a lot more youthful as you go through the months of using it, it needs to be used at night. Um, if you use it during the day, the sunlight actually breaks down the retinoic acid, which is what's the active ingredient that's helpful. So really important to know when to use something and how long and to watch for irritation. Um, I always tell people patch test anything you've never used on the inner arm, the inner elbow here, following those directions. So if it's a product that you put on and leave on all day, put it on and leave it all day. If it's one you put on and wash off or whatever, do that. And give it two days, 48 hours to make sure you don't have any redness or irritation. Much easier to clear that up than if you have it all over your face. And then the other thing I would say that people don't generally do correctly, but they're getting better at it, is to make sure you treat all areas that are exposed. So we see people today and that are my age that took pretty good care of their face, but didn't take care of the skin under their neck, their chest, their arms or hands. So they've got a 30 year old face and a 90 year old body. <laughs> so it's very important to use your skincare everywhere that's appropriate. So if you're using retinol at night and it's, I use it on my hands. One of the, I think one of the big giveaways to age happened to be hands. I don't have that uh, because I, I learned early on to take care of those. Um, the funny story about the reason for that is when I was a kid, a little kid, my grandfather was a deacon in the church. Now, this man was in his 70s when I was little. And we had to go to church with him when we visited. And because he was a deacon in the church, we had to stand there and shake the hands of all the other people, all the deacons. And they were old men. And they had these thick, hard, terrible claws that you had to, like, hold on to. And it was just disgusting. And so <laughs> I just, I got a phobia about that. I think when I was really young that I didn't want to look like that when I got older. So. I got it early. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you do have issues with hands, the exfoliation products can be very helpful. Uh, I am not a big proponent champion of skin lightening creams. I like things that even out skin tone because all tones are beautiful when they when they look nice and even. Um, and some of the skin lightening, uh, what do you call it? trends out there some of those products are not very they're dangerous they can burn your skin and leave scars so i think you know if you use good skincare products that are designed to help with the dark spots or help even out your skin tone which is retinol vitamin c serum azelaic acid kojic acid uh, tranexamic acid very good for all skin tones types in general will help even out the skin tone without changing the color um so it's unfortunate that that's a thing, but, you know, I wanted to stick that in there because it, it's something that, that 
people that are serious in skincare really, really try to help people with. Everybody wants their skin to look nice and even and glowy. And that's what everybody's after. So doing those things that we're talking about today will help will help do that. Right. Thank you um, so much, um, Chris Gibson, for your expert advice. Um, going forward, um, for those who are age 40, 50 and above, um, what is the best way for them to lose weight? Uh, definitely start slow, whatever you're going to do. But walking uh, activity, there was a study that came out, almost it's almost a year ago, in October of last year, called the Health Got, in the last three letters are, G-O-T-T -T study. Um, I did a video on this. It, they took individuals 52 to 75 that were fairly sedentary, kind of had the Western style diet, you know, some fast food here, and pizza there, you know, and they changed their diet, lent, lent them toward the Mediterranean style diet, more leafy greens, made sure that they were getting the right nutrients, supplementation in their diet, and more importantly, activity moderate activity every 20 minutes walking play with a dog whatever um this is not running a marathon type of stuff this is just activity and they were able to roll back um the people that did it were able to roll back their biological age by three years and eight weeks that's very significant so you can imagine if you make those lifestyle changes and keep them it can make a big big difference um, I was just reading, you know, uh, Queen Elizabeth just passed away a few days ago, and I was reading about how she maintained, right up till the end, she's having meetings with heads of state, you know what I mean? Um, and it was very moderate activity every day, a very light diet at night, breakfast was more, you know, I was reading, and all of the things they were talking about, because she was very cognizant, still had her mom, you know, very... In that person of that age, and of course, people go, well, she had a lot of medical care. Yeah, but it's your habits. You know, medical care addresses something that's going on with you. It's your lifestyle habits. So reading through those, what the point of the, this particular story is that I saw those same markers as a lifestyle that improved those people in that study's health, if that makes sense. So it yeah. really is about your choice. Your choices day to day, those really small ones make a big, big difference. And that lady had a drink every day, you know, so she was able to she was able to maintain a very healthy life, really pretty much till she got COVID. That's kind of when things uh, kind of went south. But even then, still active, still, you know, my mother was very similar. Um, she was uh, uh, very clear of mind and very energetic through most of her life. So, you know, that's, it, it really does have that, that. And we we lived in a household where we didn't have sugary treats in my house growing up. We didn't have fat snack food like that. We had three meals a day. They would be considered bland by most people today. Um, she was the veggie meat, you know, followed that rule. And uh, we had the occasional treat, like ice cream. But we were not a household that had that kind of stuff. And I have family, uh, which I tell on them all the time that had that different, you know, they had the, the Twinkie snack cakes, the really high sugar stuff all the time, cereals, all that stuff. And they've had far more health problems um, as they've gotten older than I've had. So you can draw your own conclusions. The studies sort of, it's that those daily choices that you're making that are really going to show up for you. Chris, what's the best workout? Now, suffice it to say that, what's the best workout for men and women? The one you'll do <laughs> consistently. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I say, I think walk. I like if, that. If not, the one, it's like sunscreen. What sunscreen should I wear? Everybody knows I like mineral and not chemical, but I'd like the one you'll wear. <laughs> because at the end of the day, the sunscreen needs to happen. So no, that's a really great question. Um, the one you'll do. So start with stuff you like. Walking is probably the easiest uh, to do. Window shopping for the ladies. <laughs> Some of them. Uh, that's Are when they you come back. Me? No, they came back. <laughs> they came back. How? How? This is how, Chris. This is how I got my walking in. 
I decided all I have to do, if you live somewhere where it's like that, um, or you live near a park, it's easier. They said they went window shopping. Um, so they would do their walk and just look in store. You know, they would walk, they would window shop and not buy stuff, but it got them that's something they really like to do. I'm like, well, do that still activity, you know, just got to leave the credit card at home. Uh, so you don't get, you don't go broke, um, you know, swimming, whatever, lightweights, um, resistance is good to add later, but I always tell people it's, it's, if you've not done anything, walking is probably the first, and you're going to be able to gauge where you are really quickly. I mean, when you first, I have people come to me and say, I tried to walk. The park is like three blocks long and four blocks wide. I was really tired after that one walk because they've been sedentary. They they keep that up. Now they, they start jogging or they start walking the beach or they, they do longer and longer and longer stuff because it works better. So really to start easy, make it easy, make it too easy so you keep doing it. Be consistent. Um, make the self determination. You're going to do any physical activity, which the body responds to you really quickly. You're going to do it for a month, four to five weeks. You know, um, the goal is to get stronger and better and feel better without injuring yourself. So that's why I always say it's it's just better to start walking, um, uh, swimming, whatever those really light activities. Um, but try to incorporate stuff that you like to do when you're doing it or places where you would like to do it because that'll motivate you more. So if window shopping is your thing, <laughs> window shopping is your thing. Yes, go do that. Great. <laughs> Such an interesting and um, enlightening um, show. We have to get a quiz. Um, do you have any projects you would like to share with my audience? Do I have any? I'm sorry? Do you have any projects you would like to share with my audience? Any? Oh. Uh, you know projects sure uh i i think well what i would what i would like to share is this is this is what i think is exciting about all of this um some of the things that i've been testing on the youtube channel uh are devices because a lot of people have sensitive skin and they can't use every single skincare product that we've talked about for anti-aging sometimes your skin just won't tolerate it so there are red light devices uh, radio frequency devices that are helpful that I'm testing that people can use in the home that used to cost a lot of money to go to a salon uh, to have those done. You can do them at home and they are helpful. They do work. Again, they take up time. You got to be very consistent and do them. Um, but I think the exciting thing about skincare is that what we're going to see happen over the next you know, 10 years or so is that Skincare routines are going to become more device centric like that. And then the skincare products are going to be the sort of the secondary supportive thing you do where right now people think of a cream for everything, sort of like a pill for everything. There's a cream for everything. And I think that we're going to see that trend go more towards devices first. You know, my skincare routine is my red face, my red light face mask three minutes a day. Every That's my skin. That's my basic. And then I use my other stuff to help with that so so i think um the technology for that uh is really exciting great good to know i'm looking forward to that that will be a really exciting time for us going forward yes i think so sure any pattern word you like to share with my audience uh yeah uh, the same thing i tell everybody start now <laughs> Because usually they're like, oh, I know I need to or be consistent uh, with your skincare now. Um, you know, start. it's never too late to start because the benefits will be there. You're, again, producing new cells all the time, whether you are not doing anything or you are doing something. The difference is just like with exercise and diet, we want to produce healthier cells. So you can actually 90 days from now, six months from now, a year from now, six years from now, be a much healthier feeling and looking human being than you are right now if you just get started. Right. Thank you once again for the motivation. I'd like to share your social media and your website. Yes, uh, it's easy to find me on YouTube. Um, you can just put Chris Gibson YouTube, Chris Gibson Skincare, any of that, or you can go to YouTube and type my name in. I come right up. Um, and all of my social media links are under every single video. 
but you can find me on Instagram, Chris Gibson Friends, Facebook, Chris Gibson Friends. And then I have a really neat blog, which is an interactive blog where the folks that are a member of that community can talk to each other, can direct message me and that skin. So fabulous. All you have to do is type that in the browser bar and it comes up. I'm the only person that has that name for now. So it's easy to find. Good to know. Good to know. Thank you once again, Chris Gibson, for the worthwhile time with me on the show. I can only wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors. I appreciate it. I really enjoyed it. All right. Thank you once again. If you'd like to catch up with any missed episodes of Live Well Lived by Mobile Lost you can do so on any cost promotion platforms or any distribution platforms you bump into online and do have an amazing time. Or perhaps you'd like to be a guest on this show, share disruptive mindship conversations on any topics or subjects under personal development and self-improvement. You can send a mail to me at mobilastiving.outcome.com. Perhaps you'd like to get to know more about me and what I've been up to. You can check me on my website, www.mobilastiving.online. Now, I'll be looking forward to connecting with you. Come on, let's have a great show together. Looking forward. With all my love, talk to you soon. Bye.